Alrighty, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. My name is Nate, and welcome back to another weather forecast discussion, this time for June 19th, 2023. Now, I haven't done one of these in a while, but we've got a lot of stuff to talk about and in a short time to do it. So if you haven't already, hit that thumbs up button down below and subscribe to help us spread this information to more and more people, and even just do that if you're new. It greatly helps us out. All right, we want to talk about the general severe weather first. We'll get into tropical weather next, and then we'll talk about something special at the end of the stream that still has something to do with weather. So we'll talk about the United States severe weather here first. We have two slight risks here for this evening, one in the northern plains and one for the southeast, both of which have uh, been just producing some general severe weather. However, the one in the southeast, especially near the Gulf Coast, has produced some tornadoes, some water spouts that have uh, landfalled on the uh, shore. So if you guys are along the shoreline, I recommend you guys watch out for the potential of some tornadic activity, especially throughout the evening tonight. Uh, as for uh, the stuff in the uh, northern plains, a lot of large hail and damaging winds. So I don't really think it'll be that big of an issue for you all. Uh, we'll move on over here into tomorrow's risk here. Uh, this is for Tuesday the 20th. We have a 2 out of 5 on the severe weather scale here in the yellow down in the deep south, as well as another one over here in the northern plains into the Midwest. And uh, that will be uh, mainly, once again, just damaging winds and some spotty hail. Maybe even the chance for a couple tornadoes down in the deep south. But other than that, not anything real significant. So we'll take a look at the HRRR model to kind of show you guys as to where the general severe weather is. Of course, the time is in the top left-hand corner in eastern, so watch out for that if you guys are uh, wanting to kind of see how things function. But you see we got a lot of severe weather across the board here in the uh, southeast into the mid-Atlantic, maybe even into the Ohio River Valley. We get some showers and thunderstorms. Those storms will continue to persist all the way throughout the evening and into the overnight hours. So that's definitely going to be something that you're going to want to watch out for. We also want to watch out for Manitoba and Saskatchewan, as well as the Northern Plains. As I said, the uh, threat for severe weather is possible up there. So definitely something that you guys are going to want to watch out for heading into the late evening and also into the overnight hours. We'll move off into tomorrow on Tuesday. You can see we kind of just have this general low pressure system that's sitting over the southeast. You can kind of see how storms are swirling around this general area in a counterclockwise fashion. So that's kind of the reason why we're getting some more severe weather there. And then you can see this massive line of storms that uh, kind of just congeal together, expanding from the Manitoba areas all the way down south. So. Definitely something to watch out for with that if you're over there. So now since we're done with severe weather in the United States, let's talk about the tropics. Hurricane season did start at the beginning of the month, and now we already have a tropical depression. This is Tropical Depression 3 right here, which was Invest 92L for people who were paying attention yesterday. We also have Invest 93L right behind it as well. That one's a lot more disorganized, but still also could potentially be a tropical system here very soon. Future Nate here, Tropical Depression 3 is now turned into Tropical Storm Brett. It is now a 40 mile per hour storm with a 1,008 millibar minimum pressure moving west at 21 miles per hour. So there you go. Uh, this is just the general look of the Atlantic. You can see we have our low pressure system over in the eastern portions of the United States. We also have this big flow here, big high pressure system that is situated over the central portion of the Atlantic. And this high pressure system is going to try and steer a lot of this flow off to the west and into the Lesser Antilles. So the Lesser Antilles may have to watch out for this one. We will zoom in here to show you guys some of our satellite imagery. This is our infrared satellite imagery that shows us our tropical depression 3. You can see the general flow of these clouds that are wrapping around into a, a wide center. It's not exactly super consolidated quite yet. So therefore, they have not given this a tropical storm. If this does end up forming into a tropical storm, which the National Hurricane Center says it will, this will be Brett. This will be B-R-E-T, Brett, Tropical Storm Brett. So uh, something interesting to note with this, uh, we do have some good swirl in general, and we have some good outflow as well. You can see these uh, little clouds that are expanding in a clockwise fashion. That is healthy ventilation for tropical systems. Whenever you see that, you know that this storm is definitely tropical and it definitely has room for improvement. Watch out overnight tonight. That might be the time period into which this storm could potentially start to intensify. 
Uh, we call that D-Max. D-Max is uh, usually when there's a few hours after sunset and the storm has had time overnight. Uh, that's usually when thunderstorms start to become a bit more robust within this general time frame, and we could potentially be seeing some more of an intensification period from Tropical Depression 3. Now here's our water vapor satellite imagery to kind of give us a little more of a zoomed out view of this thing and see what all is going on. We have a lot of moisture in this general area right around here. But the only issue with that is outside of that you can see a lot of these dark black areas. This is a lot of dry air around and so there's only so much moisture can do for you with this storm. Of course this thing is forecasted to intensify and we'll get into that here in a bit. But this thing does have dry air and it might come back to haunt this thing here in a bit. But otherwise, you can see these little feathery clouds that extend away from it. This is our feathery cirrus that is expanding in a clockwise fashion. This is once again a good sign that this storm could potentially try to intensify in the future as that it is trying to expand its moisture around and block out a lot of that dry air. So something to note, something to watch out for as this continues to move off to the west. Now let's pull up our infrared microwave imagery so that way we can kind of just see where the main areas of convection could be located. And we see that we have this band that is starting to kind of wrap around, but we don't really have another band on the opposite side of it that kind of, you know, makes the storm symmetrical. And so uh, this thing still has a little ways to go, maybe a little bit of dry air that is punching on the northern side of the circulation because you can clearly see where the uh, curl is within the storm. So right about here is where the actual area of the uh, center of low pressure. And so we still have a little bit of ways to go before this thing really gets its act together. But it's still something to note that we do have this band that is starting to wrap around. And I'm also kind of noticing that this thing is still tilted. It's kind of uh, tilted from the uh, northeast to the southwest. So it's still a little bit more of a tropical wave. It is trying to get a little bit more symmetrical. And when we start to see a little bit more of a uniform look to it to where it's a bit more uh, spherical, if you will, then we can probably start talking about this thing really being a tropical system. But as of right now, Microwave still says we've got a little bit more of that hooking signature within it rather than a full uniform circle. Now here's the forecast cone from the National Hurricane Center. Once again, this is expected to intensify into a tropical storm, of course, on the off chance that it doesn't, then it will still remain as Tropical Depression 3. But if this does end up forming into a tropical storm, this will be Brett. So uh, get familiar with that name. This will continue to uh, move on through and potentially even intensify into a hurricane, which uh, it's been a while, actually a long, long while. I'll pull up the statistics. Uh, if I do post a video tomorrow, I'll pull up the statistics as to when the last time we've had a hurricane in June was. But we are anticipated to see a hurricane on its approach to the Lesser Antilles and the Windward Islands. So watch out for that. And then areas over here near Puerto Rico, Haiti, and the Dominican Republic, you guys might even need to watch out too for the threat of a tropical system moving in your area sometime around Saturday. All right, Saturday morning into Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening, that's when rains can start to move on through. But for right now, Windward Islands are going to want to watch out sometime from Thursday into Friday. I really do believe that's the time frame into which we could be watching out for something potentially to the uh, level of a hurricane. Now, I want to go over a couple of things here, such as the spaghetti models, because I really do believe this is going to be very helpful for us. Um, just to kind of give you a little bit of a backstory with how the models have been dealing with this tropical system. The GFS originally took the system and pushed it out towards Bermuda. And actually, as a matter of fact, I can show you guys that here. This is what the GFS says with all of these systems here. You can see this purple line, and it took it all the way out over here. And uh, that is because the GFS doesn't really do well with high-pressure systems. It actually has what is called a weak ridge bias. And uh, usually that means that the high-pressure systems on the GFS are not as expansive and not as strong as they would be um, in actuality, whereas the Euro actually has a little bit more of a strong ridge bias, so it actually makes it stronger than it actually is supposed to be. Now, the Euro has been doing a very good job of this uh, because the Euro actually depicted this system moving into the Caribbean and into the Lesser Antilles. And so you can see with this track, all these spaghetti models are taking it into the Lesser Antilles here, but it actually takes it further south of Puerto Rico, Haiti, and the Dominican Republic, 
and it actually moves through closer into maybe portions of Central America or even Jamaica. So that might be something to watch out for. Of course, that is a long while away, but the consensus here says the models are taking this into the Lesser Antilles here, specifically on the southern side, whereas the GFS, the GFS takes this a little bit further north and potentially could even uh, spread its rainfall up into portions of the greater Antilles, such as Puerto Rico, uh, Haiti, and the Dominican Republic, as well as Jamaica. So Jamaica might even need to watch out for this regardless, but Jamaica probably would not see this until potentially the beginning of next week. Now, I also want to mention that sea surface temperatures are very hot within a lot of these areas, especially in the main development region. We're talking, on average, these uh, sea surface temperature anomalies are well above average. I mean, you can see here, a lot of these reds indicate about a degree or two, maybe even three or four in some of these areas above average for this time of year. So uh, it's no surprise, at least as of right now, that we've got a tropical system that is trying to ride along the main development region from Africa over into areas north of South America into the Windward Islands. And we could potentially see some intensification, like the National Hurricane Center said, into a potential hurricane. So watch out for that as this moves on through. I also want to mention here real quickly that we do have some ocean heat content. If you think of how uh, convective available potential energy is uh, basically what fuels severe weather, this is what fuels intensification for tropical systems. The ocean heat content, how far the heat uh, moves down in the water. And so the more heat a tropical system can pick up from the water, the stronger or the uh, more time that a storm can sit over a particular spot for it to continue to intensify and uh, further mature and stuff like that. So, well, as we get closer and closer towards the Windward Islands, we could be talking about a period of intensification here. And even as it gets into the Caribbean, we could potentially continue to see that given the right environment. So we'll have to watch out for that and how this storm interacts with the ocean heat content. But for right now, there is enough energy for this thing to continue to intensify. Of course, it's not the most that I've ever seen in the world, but it is definitely still enough for this thing. All right, now let's transition over the Invest 93L. Over the next seven days, this thing has a 50% chance of formation. So got a long time period before it actually can do something. And this thing could very well turn into another tropical depression in the next week. So we'll have to watch out for this as well. Fortunately, this does seem to want to move a bit further away from land. You can see here on the spaghetti models from the Euro that unlike 92L, or in this instance, Tropical Depression 3, this actually takes it away from the Lesser Antilles and more into the open waters. So that's not really as much of a concern with that. And you can even see the GFS does the same exact thing for the most part. So uh, we'll, we'll continue to watch out for it towards the end of the week. We'll be able to make sure that uh, this thing will be able to go out to the waters if that is what the models say. Uh, but I would still watch out, all right? On the off chance that things do veer, tropical weather is weird that way. We have seen models that have uh, differed in opinions and even changed their own opinions on some certain tropical systems in the history of weather. So we'll be able to show you guys as to what's going on with that as this moves on through. But still a lot of time before this thing actually impacts any sort of land or even gets close to land. Now, I also want to show you guys here our wind shear and our vorticity. You can see our vorticity is outlined in those contours. And then, of course, we also have the wind shear with our wind barbs as well. And you can see that this is really steered off by that high pressure system. I mean, you can see the wind barbs. We got about 30 knot flow uh, that is pushing this into the lesser. In my opinion, pretty much set in stone that Tropical Depression 3 will be heading off into that general area. Um, it's just what will be happening with 93L behind it. Could that continue to stay? Could it move off towards the north like some of the models are saying? That is the telltale sign as well as what will the intensity of these tropical systems be as it gets closer and closer towards the system. Now, I also want to mention here real quickly, there is a lot of dry air. We talked about the dry air in the satellite imagery that we talked about earlier, and this dry air is not going to go anywhere, all right? As this system continues to move off towards the west, this is going to encounter more and more of that dry air, and how the storm sustains up to that point will be dependent upon how much moisture this thing can generate. If we can see a lot more showers and thunderstorms that can form off of this thing, maybe create a couple barriers from itself and the outside of it, then yes, sure, we probably could see a strong tropical system move on through into the Lesser Antilles. So 
definitely something to watch out for with that. But the models are saying that the dry air is going to get to this thing and mainly weaken it. However, there is a new model that has been, uh, I guess, created, and it is expected to replace what was the HWRF model, and it is the HAFS model, the HAFS model. Uh, there is an A version and a B version. Uh, the difference between the two, don't exactly know. That's something that I'm going to have to continue to research as we get closer and closer to the heart of the tropical season. But you can see that this thing is a 983 millibar system that is a, a high-end tropical storm into a low-end hurricane on its approach to the Lesser Antilles. So uh, the National Hurricane Center might be uh, using this a little bit more in regards to how this could actually sustain as this gets closer and closer towards the Lesser Antilles. But the one thing I want to note here with this is that see how there is a lot of thunderstorms on the eastern side and not as much on the western side. This might be because of all the dry air that is in that area, uh, this model might be saying, hey, this tropical system might sustain, but it might not be as uniform. So something to kind of note with that, with what the models are saying. If that is true, we probably will not see any sort of rapid intensification. And the ceiling of this may be category one, maybe category two, if this thing does actually intensify significant. All right, now last but not least, can you guys figure out where we're looking at right now? If you said Central Europe, you are 100% correct. Uh, I know you guys are probably thinking, Nate, why are you looking at Europe? Believe it or not, whenever stuff does get significant outside of the United States, I'll stream it. That includes Canada, that includes Germany, all right? In this instance, this is a severe weather system that is gonna be moving on through. We have a big trough that is digging on through. And we've got some strong wind shear that is going to be moving over the central portions of Germany. All right. So if you know anyone that lives near that Frankfurt area or anyone south of Frankfurt, somewhere around that area, uh, they could potentially be seeing some severe weather because we do have a low pressure system that is going to be creating a lot of vorticity, especially along the triple point. I'll show you guys what I mean by that here in a second. Um, but you can see here uh, we have a lot of moisture, at least according to the euro. We have uh, some dew points that are in upwards of 16, 17, 18 19 20 degrees celsius which would be somewhere around the 60 to 70 degree dew point measure uh in fahrenheit so just something to note we do have a lot of moisture over here in this general area we also have a lot of energy a lot of convective available potential energy we're talking about 2000 to maybe even a little bit shy of 3000 joules per kilogram of convective available potential energy which is essentially the displacement between the warm air rising and the cold air sinking in the atmosphere the greater the displacement the more energy there is for thunderstorms to form or sustain so we have quite a bit of that over here in germany here on thursday we'll be talking about thursday morning for us to potentially stream all right we'll have to see we'll have to keep up with the models and uh we also have to say look at this i mean this is as clear cut of a triple point as you're gonna get Here's your cold front right here. Here is your warm front. Right about there is where I'm thinking where the hot spot for tornadoes could potentially be. There is a threat for tornadoes here today. I would expect that here for central to western Germany, heading off into extreme eastern France, maybe even areas of Belgium and Luxembourg could actually be a potential area to watch out for as well. So we'll see. We'll see how things keep going on. I might upload a video on Wednesday. We'll see what happens there. Uh, but if this continues to end up being significant, if the tropical systems continue to be significant, I'll give you guys an update there as well. So thank you guys so much for watching this super long video. If you did enjoy it, please be sure to leave a like down below. Subscribe if you're new. Turn on notifications. Share this with friends and family and on social media. Also follow me on social media. Link will be in the description down below. If you have any questions, ask me on Twitter or Discord, and I will catch you guys next time. Peace out, everyone. And you know what? I always knew there was one thing I was forgetting. I'm going to be streaming tonight, but it's not going to be weather. It's going to be sports. If you want to hear me lose my mind over a hockey team, sports bounds where it's at. Link is in the description down below for the live stream. And of course, see you guys next time.